Hey everyone, welcome back to Motorcycle Live. I'm Ruby Rides. And I'm the Chronicles of Claudia. And Claudia, what are we doing here today? Well, we are here today to see the top 10 bikes of 2022. It's exciting, shall we go? I'm so excited. Let's yes, go, let's go. At number 10, we have the Honda NT1100, which basically takes the frame and the engine of the Africa Twin 1100. It's priced at around £12,000, and there is a DCT version, which means it is actually automatic, twist and go. So long journey is only super easy and really comfortable. How does it feel sitting on it? Incredibly comfortable, actually. Um, Nice wide handlebar, good kind of neutral body position. Seats nice and padded. Yeah. You can imagine you could do quite a lot of long distance riding. Obviously, this is what this bike is made for. Yeah. Um, yeah. Overall, very comfortable. Nice. Well, it's got 101 brake horsepower and it's got 77 foot pound of torque. There's nice features as well. For example, the windshield is adjustable. It is. The panniers come a standard. a standard. Although it's got the frame and the engine of the Africa Twin. This has a different chassis and a slightly shorter wheelbase, making it handle much better than its sister bike, the Africa Twin. Can you believe that this bike does 250 miles per tank? It's pretty incredible, that, isn't it? I mean, brilliant. you're touring, you can do a lot, of, a lot of miles in that. This model also has a 6.5 inch TFT automatic dash. It comes with three different modes, tour, urban and rain mode. So that covers you in all kinds of elements. Shall we check out number nine? Yes. Up at number nine is the Honda CBR1000RRR. Now, this bike has 215 brake horsepower. It's got 112 newton meter of torque. How is it different to last year's? Compared to last year's model, they have completely changed the gearing. So your rear sprocket now, instead of being a 42, it's actually a 43, mm -hmm. which gives you a lot more low down grunt. And I think the previous gen was criticized for not having that yeah. grunt in lower revs. It was revs. a bit flat, wasn't it? Three teeth different, it's quite a big difference. It's so, quite um, a big yeah. difference. They've redesigned the airbox and the intake funnels for smoother airflow. So it should be fun to ride it should uh, be good fun, on yeah. road and track as Both opposed to the track, yes. previous gen. What do you think of the styling, the colour? I love the traditional colour scheme on this one. I think it's very striking. Mm. It's very Honda. So it is its typical like yeah. DNA for this, this particular bike. Yeah. Um, styling wise, again, this has got the aggressive front end. And it reflects the first fire blade ever, which is back there. It does. So it's got yeah. that retro typical Honda styling. And exactly. Yeah. It has a five inch TFT dash mm. with everything i want you to sit on it even me being short i'll be mm -hmm. a bit cramped do you what yes. in terms of leg height so uh, i know you're a bit tippy toey <laughs> yeah 20 28 inch okay. uh, in seat. so let's see how you fit on it that's actually very cramped the, pe the pegs are very bit. high and very far back and they're yeah. probably more so than what i've changed my r1 actually it Track. puts you in an this is going to be position. a wicked position you're going to yeah. really tuck behind the screen you can yeah. get really behind and really hug close to the bike oh. uh, i think the track focus weapon is yeah. going to be wicked let's check out number eight Coming in at number eight is the KTM Super Duke R Evo, and it's a 1290, and what a beast this is. I mean, overall, I think power-wise, I think we're 180 brake, so for, for an animal like this, it's a lot for this kind of position, right, a riding bike. It's 140 new pieces of torque. What else is new on this bike? So, they've also put the WP semi-active suspension on this okay. bike. There's so many options and modes to ride this bike on different environments for mm -hmm. example track road so the different modes are track advanced and auto mm -hmm. and auto senses the style of riding and yep. kind of adjusts accordingly Absolutely. also they come in two new colorways this one very fond of this color and the other color is the uh, orange and it's like silver. orange and silver isn't it yeah. yeah like a gloss kind of silver you have test ridden the previous super duke car i have yes how uh, would you feel about riding something that has more options in terms of suspension is it such an animal of a bike it's got so much power and you need to have, you know, providing on the road when there's slippy conditions and you don't know what's around the corner, you need something that's going to have your back a bit more. Because this has got so much power and so much torque, you can get in a sticky situation quite easily. So having yeah. that, knowing that the electronics are going to back you up, yeah. I think is a good thing to keep in your mind, really. It really suits you, Claudia, but we need to go and check out number seven. We do, yes. Let's go. At number seven is the Yamaha XSR 900. It's got 117 brake horsepower and it's got 93 newton meter of torque. Claudia, tell us all about the XSR 900. We've got so much to tell you. I mean, this bike has been completely redesigned. The whole uh, idea of this redesign is to make it lighter and obviously have more power. In terms of the engine, the capacity has actually been increased to um, 43 cc's extra. So we're now 890 cc. In terms of all the internals of the engine, it's again, it's all been redesigned, it's, everything's a lot lighter, it's now forged aluminium. What else is new on it? Well, it's got forged uh, wheels, it's got forged aluminium frames, it's got forged 
pillion pegs um, and I feel like with this bike it's all about weight reduction it yeah. weighs 195 kgs it retails at around 10,000 pounds so this bike's electronics have also been upgraded so you have now have the six axis IMU which um, in terms of uh, traction control ABS yeah. corner ABS um, wheelie slide control. wheelie control, yep. slide control, all of that is now covered. It's also got a 3.5 inch TFT dash which is quite fancy. In terms of road riding in all conditions, you know, it, it, it keeps you safe basically. That's great to have, especially with a power increase. Power increase. What is at number six? At number six we have the Ninja H2 SX SE. Now, this bike has 200 PS and it has 137 newton meter of torque of course it's supercharged and what else is different on it claudia now this bike is the first bike in its sector to actually have three point uh, radar technology which is incredible on a bike i mean this kind of technology you only kind of get on the upper market kind of cars so it has forward collision control um, blind spot control so if you've got any, anybody kind of emerging up to you from the side and you're not aware it'll actually warn you to stop you pulling out so yeah. But the whole idea of having to do a lifesaver, the bike's got you covered. Um, and it's also got adaptive cruise, so if you're doing long distance, obviously this bike is for long distance travel, uh, you're on the motorway, you don't want to be having to constantly up and down your speed, the bike is literally going to lock onto the vehicle in front and match that speed. So I think, you know, what kind of technology is that to have on a bike? It's incredible. Amazing. Well, mechanically, they've also increased the overall power of the engine, the torque of the engine, to comply with Euro 5 as well, they yes. have to make adjustments to make up yep. for that. And they upgraded the Rembos as well. Yes. Rembo brakes. Rembos, got adjustable uh, shower suspension. Look how incredibly mean this looks. Now this yep. actually is the radar technology, as you can see where it spins around. Yeah. I would be so interested to ride this bike because not only is it a supercharged mental machine, as you know, I have the H2, but I find the H2 extremely aggressive. Yes. Seat position. The road riding, you know, yeah. When it comes to all the gadgets and gizmos, I think you get a lot for your money. Speaking of money, it retails at just under twenty-five thousand mm pounds. -hmm. You get a lot for your money, though, don't you? I mean, look at the size of that TFT dash. Obviously, with the rider modes and all yes. the adjustable electronics on there. This, I feel, would be ideal because you got a lot of that power, but still a more lot. comfortable seat and position. Yeah, much more neutral riding position. Yeah, your pegs, you know, your legs aren't tucks in behind you as they are so much on yours yes so overall as a road bike i think this is a much better package so we are back at yamaha for number five and we are here for the yamaha's r7 now the r7 is a new completely new model and it is to take over from the r6 which has now been discontinued so it's meant to be a, to fill the gap between the r3 and the r1 so we now have the r7 What's new with the R7? So it's got 72 brake horsepower, it's got 67 newton meter of torque, it's got a parallel twin MT07 engine, but surely they've uh, made some changes to make it uh, sportier than the MT07. Obviously the MT07 is more of an upright style bike, so we now have a sports seat, so it'd be more of the aggressive kind of uh, riding position. So the R7 is actually more sophisticated than the MT07. We have adjustable suspension. Yeah. Um, however, it doesn't have a TFT dash, but this model can also come with a quick shifter, which I think is a really good um, add-on really for a bike like this. But what else is new? It's got a Brembo master cylinder, it's got LED lights and indicators. It's also worth mentioning that they geared down the final drive for more acceleration. Let's go to number four. Up at number four is the Triumph Tiger 1200, the 2022 model, which is a bit of a mystery really because we don't know much about this bike. The only thing that we know is that it's got a T-plane crank. T-plane crank, apparently, according to Triumph, gives more character to, uh, in lower revs. That's okay. all we know. What else? It's shaft driven, has the larger front wheel and thicker tread. It's clearly more of an off-road bike. Spoke so, as well. As it's spoke, yes. We also know that this bike has been designed to reduce weight. Being lightweight is going to add for uh, movability and being uh, very nimble off-road, which is obviously what you need. As you can see, the screen here is adjustable. That's obviously going to raise up and down uh, to help with wind. It has a large screen. We're not sure if it's TF TFT or not. Um, yeah. Not much else we can really say about it because we don't know. We also know that it has a brand new frame. I'm not sure on colours. As you can see here, it's in their Triumph kind of branding. Do you want to sell it? See what it's like? Let's have a sip. Yes. It looks tall. Is it tall? It is very tall. <laughs> this model has the Brembo radial brakes. There's not much else we know. They haven't disclosed what kind of suspension it has yet. Yeah. Um, so there's lots of information that we will have to find out in due course. But in terms of 
the overall look of the bike is quite an aggressive sort of styling, uh, yeah. very modernised with angled design, the way the tank kind of forms around you and comes into your waist with cinched in little seats, um, it's very aggressive sort of styling yeah. and it's incredibly comfortable. Does it come with any panniers? I don't know, do we? I'm asking these questions, but we don't know. Basically, this is a 1200 Tiger, but we don't know much about it. At number three, we have the Yamaha MT10. And MT stands for Master of Talk. And I feel like Yamaha have made sure that they are achieving this on this bike. It's got 164 brake horsepower. It's got 112 newton meter of torque. It weighs 212. And Claudia, tell us what is different on this new MT10. Well, to start with, the engine components are all made out of forged aluminium. Now, this is just to reduce uh, the overall weight of the bike, so yes. obviously higher power and acceleration. They have also fiddled with the fuel injections to increase more, more torque, so although this bike has so much torque, you now have more torque. It's also got a Brembo Master Cylinder, it's got a facelift, it's got a very angry front. Yeah, it's got a really angry facelift, and I think that style of the bike, it just really suits it, so yeah, I think yeah. it's a, it's a good like upgrade. It? I love it actually. I yeah. think it's a bit of a Marmite bike. When it first came out, I wasn't quite so sure, but the more I've seen it, the it's more it's grown on me. Claudia, let's go to number two. Number two. Yeah. Up at number two is a beautiful Triumph Speed Triple 1200 RR. This bike is a hybrid between a super naked and a super bike. It's got the oomph and the character of a sports bike while remaining friendly and uh, usable for the road. It's got 178 brake horsepower, it's got 125 newton meter of torque, and it weighs just under 200, and it retails at around 18,000 pounds. Yeah, you get quite a lot for your money here. Obviously, you get the incredible styling of the bike here. It's complemented in this lovely cherry red, which yeah. shows off all of its curves and its design lines. And talking about the aerodynamics of the nose coat, it's gone for a more retro look this time with the centre headlights. So it's more of a calf racer kind of style, but complemented yeah. with this lovely carbon front fender and carbon trim all the way around the model, which looks absolutely incredible. It looks very eye-catching. It does. It? It's probably one of the main bikes that I saw walking in. I was, I kind of saw this and thought, I must drawn have a look at that. It. I really am drawn with it. It actually comes with clip-on handlebars. The main difference as well between this and the RS is that this has the Olin semi-active suspension. The resets are positioned a little bit backwards just to give you a different, more aggressive uh, riding position in comparison to the RS, which is just the super naked. Yeah. Claudia, have a seat on it and let me know what you think. I'd like to have a seat. What's nice actually is it's quite a narrow seat. Yes. So although I'm quite long-legged, just shy of flat-footed, which is quite nice. In terms of looking down at it, it's a little bit like the Daytona in terms of what you see yes. looking down. So you've yeah. got the, the wider tank here that comes in shaped nicely here. Yeah. Now, position-wise, oh, you're right, aren't you? The, the foot pegs are quite high. Yeah. So I'd imagine on road, sorry, on track, should I say, this is going to be a real lean machine kind of getting down behind yes. the screen. It's going to be a great bike. It's the best of both, isn't it? Best of both. Yeah. But like you said, these aren't too down. Mm. They're quite upright, they're quite wide. So yeah. in terms of, you know, your body position it's quite a neutral body position i don't think you're going to have too much weight on your hands yeah and because they're wider it's spread out nicer so i think yeah i think it's a great crossover really it's, it's a very very exciting bike that they've don't you just out. love all the carbon trims the front hugger side uh, panel where the indicators are yeah i can see you on one of these i know yeah. it's lovely isn't it especially in red this is a beautiful color but right shall we move on to number one we shall let's do it and at number one of course it's a ducati we have the beautiful Ducati Street Fighter V2. It's got 153 brake horsepower and 101 newton meter of torque. Claudia, tell us about this. I mean, what an incredible machine. I like the fact that it's now a slightly more entry level version of the V4. Now, the V4 Street Fighter went down as a hit. It's an incredible bike. So, this is just a slightly dialed back. It shares the same engine as the Panigale V2. I had the privilege of riding that on track, and it is an absolute animal. It doesn't tear your head off, though. The Panigale V2 is basically the baby V4 and obviously has slightly less power. Um, it's derived from the V2 engine, so great characteristics. So in terms of the gearing, they've downgeared it by two extra teeth. So it's added a bit more hooliganism. So obviously if you want to have a bit more fun on the road with this upright style bike, you've got that. Um, but because it's down slightly, I think it's down two horsepower, so it's a slightly bit more uh, road usable. Um, but yeah, what else is new with the bike? Um, I think this is a great cost between a superbike 
and a naked. It's got yeah. all the fun for the super bike, but more usability yeah. and flexibility for for road use. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that is one thing that was probably that would probably attract someone to buying this. Yeah. Is it's the best of both worlds. I agree. But also, it's more accessible in terms of pricing at oh, fifteen gosh. grand. Yeah, I think right. fifteen. I think it was just shy of fifteen, isn't it? I think just shy of yeah. fifteen thousand pounds for a bike like this that gives you this versatility. I think it's a, it's a great still, really. Great still. It's uh, fully kitted out with Brembo master cylinder, Showa front forks, adjustable forks. Yeah. It's a Ducati, so it's just absolutely stunning. You get all the bling with it, really. So yeah. you really do get what get what you pay for. Can I sit on it? Yes, I think you should. <laughs> but it's all one. It is all you know. <laughs> Ducati. Tippy toes. Tippy toes. It's got that kind of like, more aggression about yeah. the position yeah. as opposed to just upright and comfortable. It's more like this. Yeah. It reminds me a little bit of the seating position of the Super G. Yeah, it's a bit more race focused, yeah, isn't it? So there's a good crossover between yeah. the two. Claudia, I think we've earned ourselves a coffee. I think we have. Should we go for a coffee? Yeah. We are here at the Rurik and Engine Hawk stand, the sponsors of this video. So thank you Rurik and Engine Hawk for sponsoring this video. Thank you very much. Claudia, what an amazing day it's been. It's been a really good day, yes. We've seen an awful lot. There's yeah. a lot on show here. Um, it's been a, it's an incredible show. There's four or five halls and so much to see. Yeah. Um, but in terms of bikes, what yeah. probably was your favourite? So I have to say I have a soft spot for Kawasaki's and yeah. the new SX SE supercharged really caught my eye. It's a bit of you that, isn't it? Yeah, it's just a bit extreme. My favourite, what the bike I was looking forward to the most was probably the Triumph um, RR. I mean, that is stunning, especially in that candy bear. It's a really exciting bike. So a unique looking bike. Really unique, it? yeah. It's a good crossover between the two. And you fitted well on it. I did course. fit well on it. What would you have wanted to see? The Yamaha haven't got a full stand here today. They haven't got the bikes on show, so that was a real shame. So I'd like to have a look at the MT10 in person. And also the R7 is, I've not seen one at all. So actually yeah. have an understanding of how big it is. From the photographs, it looks quite a narrow bike, um, but obviously it's between the 300 and the 600, that kind of um, to get the, fill the gap between, isn't it? So yeah. it'd be nice to see the actual size of it and have a sit on it and get a feel for it, really. It's a shame that the Yamahas weren't there because there's the uh, XSR 900, the MT10 and the R7 mm. that we feel like we missed out on Definitely. seeing, sitting on and seeing how they yeah. feel. The, I would have absolutely loved to see the Bratelli the Aprilia 660 Toronto. Claudia, I reckon it's time to eat. I think it is. My stomach's grumbling, so uh, get Let's the food. Yes. Come. <laughs> Absolutely love it really. Um the sorry. Um, sorry, we're in the middle of filming. <laughs> Thank you. We're just sorry, we're in the middle of filming. Sorry. <laughs> You'll make it to the outtakes. <laughs> Say the last bit again. What number is it? Sorry. Sorry. M207. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, nice. What is at number six? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> what? Imagine, you know, oh there's carburetor and then fuel. Can we have a look? We have. Let's yeah. go. Oh, we're in it. We have. I said we have. 